Today I've travelled to Devon. I'm in a little town called Beer, uh, and I'm not having one, but I may do later. What I've come to do is to explore how you make one of these. This is a track for a model railway. Yes, you've guessed it, I'm at Pico. Christian, we're in the tool room now here at Pico, and this is where you make, as the, as the name states, the tools for your parts. Now, these are fabulous pieces of engineering that we've got here. Can you talk us through what, really what they are? I mean, it's quite obvious, I know, but what they are and how you make them. Yeah, no problem. So, we have a, 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 an arrangement of uh, injection moulding tools, um, producing various parts. Um, your classic example, is, this is a Code 75 track piece, uh, medium radius turnout made on a 240 by 170 piece of mould steel, um, roughly about 40 Rockwell. Okay. Um, and then moving along, um, you have like a three inch tool. This is producing um, the rooftop of a wagon. Um, and then onto our insert moulding pieces. Um, a team in the mould shop will place various bits of rail into this tool. Um, the tool will close, feed with plastic, and then you have a fully completed assembly a point tool. Now I wonder how many people that, that buy your products and use model railways actually go into the detail of thinking about how they're made because this really is marvellous engineering, precision machining isn't it? Yeah. Now just, just tell us, I mean, so you, you put these inserts in in, in case they wear you can change the inserts, is that how it works? Yeah, it's part of the um, solution so obviously over time parts will wear, there will be damage, um, it's a lot easier to just replace a single section of a tool as opposed to replicating and producing the whole tool again. Um, there's also variations in our tools. Um, a classic example in the middle of this tool, depending on what the customer wants, whether it's a smooth blended radius or a sharp corner, we can just produce a small section of inset that you take out to replace as opposed to producing three or four different tools. So. Okay, so now in your tool room here, you're doing the majority of the, of the machine inside, either on your Herco machine or your rotors. What denotes what, air, what part goes on which machine and how, do, how does that work? Um, so it will depend entirely on, on, on what we're doing. So for example, with this tool, uh, you obviously fit the inserts into a pocket, which is machined generally on our Herco. Um, and not to say that the Herco isn't capable of producing a finished size, but we will generally use it for roughing. Um, they're quite sturdy machines, easy to use. You can get a cutter in taking big depths of cut. Um, whereas the rotors probably wants to be a little bit more intricate, it's completely capable of roughing. But whilst it's doing that, we can produce these inserts to smaller detail using very fine tools, high spindle speeds, high feed rates. Yeah, because that's what the Rodas is about. I think you've got a 42,000 RPM spindle, haven't you? And it, yeah. it moves at a, a phenomenal speed. And that really gives you those, those precise, well, those, those quality surface finishes, but those really intricate tolerances, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, How absolutely. tight, what would you be machining something like this to, and why? So, for plastic, generally you can get away with about a 50 micron like gap as you like so when the tool closes as long as the size is less than 50 microns you won't get flash or escaping plastic basically um, we generally work to a much tighter tolerance of that probably about 10 microns which may seem slightly over the top um, that's also even higher than some engineering companies like Rolls-Royce um, but we do take a lot of pleasure and detail is just everything that we're about with Picarama. So our products need to be the best that they can be. So does it get to a point where you can't machine these? And if so, then it goes on to the, to the, the EDM side, the spark yeah, side? Yeah, there are some limitations to what you can do with milling. Um, obviously, you're limited to the tool that you can use. Um, and that is the greatest limitation to speeds and feeds and efficiencies. Um, your classic examples, we go down to about a 0.2 cutter, but rarely. 0.3 and 0.5 are our bread and butter. This is obviously going to leave radiuses in corners. Um, some of our parts need to be sharp edges, so that's when we will produce electrodes, again on these machines, 
um, so we can spark out pockets, cavities, create sharp corners. Well, why do they need to be sharp though for the finished product? It goes down to the level of detail that we're after. Um, our customers obviously want everything to be as realistic as possible. Uh, a great example is concrete based track. Obviously when you go around the country and you see these sleepers, they are sharp edged corners. There's no point in us trying to replicate that if we can't produce those sharp corners. So we will try to sort after that detail. Okay, now this is, this is the track, isn't it, really, what we're looking at here. But then, then when you start moving in onto a, a part like this, because you, you, your range is so diverse, isn't it? You don't just make the tracks, oh, yeah. the trains, <laughs> you make all of the, the kind of accessories that go with it, don't you, as well? Can you explain what else it is that you, you make and, yeah, and, so and where this fits? Any, anything a model railway enthusiast needs to create their layout, um, we can make basically we're only limited by what we can do so thankfully our tool room is vast and we have a, a, a large range of technologies available to us um, this classic example of a tool is a the roof of a wagon that would be towed along on the track by a train um, again we're only limited by what's possible with technology so mm. everything that we can do we will do but this finish that you've got on here why, why do you need that uh, it, there's a few reasons for it. The, the, the main reason will be the ease of ejection on the tooling um, and another aspect of it will be the detailing that you expect. You're looking at a curved roof on the train, they're never going to be completely smoothed finishes. So again, we're just after that detail and, and finish standard. And do you keep these machines busy, your Herco and, and your Roder's machines? I mean, is it because you've got so many products that you're making tools for all the time? Uh, yeah, so we have quite an uh, advanced and developed uh, development department and they're constantly bringing out new ideas and new products. Our machines run, if they could, 24-7, but we try to avoid uh, overnight running um, just for the safety side of things. But yeah, every machine will generally be running every day. Uh, we're limited by the number of staff that we have and that's our only limitation really. We had a long-standing relationship with Herco for our older VM1, um, which is a solid bomb-proof machine. Um, we use it for all processes, including like finishing of products. Um, so it was a natural route to go down. Uh, the VM5 is more than capable of any task that we ask it to do. Um, and the road is, is just capable of such detail and intricacy. Herco are always available 24-7 via phone or email. Um, Servicing has been fantastic. Um, support has been brilliant. Um, and the machines are, like I said, just bomb-proof.